Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020. It's career mode. We're on episode 175. Continue on with the Giro d'Italia. It's stage 14 of 21, so we're two-thirds of the way through this race. This is also the halfway point when it comes to the mountain stages, so the third of five. And then, starting with our very next stage, stage 15, we'll have the first of two time trials. So the decisive point of this tour essentially is now. Uh, Millar got caught behind a slow rider at the base of this climb and really dropped back fast. So he's slowly recovering on that right now. Usually we'll rely on him as one of our better climbers, unfortunately. He's on a minus two today. Johnson, who's going to be the first one out the back, is on a minus four. Let's go ahead and set him to auto as we're already starting to get a little bit of a rain-snow mix. And we've got three peaks, three sisters to uh, surpass here in the next little while. David Killen also already on the way back. We're down to 85 riders and set him to auto. Uh, Kolk now on his way back. Set him to auto. And then that means we're now Millar, who's just recovered. That gives us five riders at the front and just 70 riders in the peloton. We've got eight kilometers still to go on this climb. Let's take uh, Talapov. Well, definitely Millar. Millar's... Okay, so Millar's in place. He's supporting Breck. We need to support... Uh, AFP, we'll go ahead and use Talpov for that. Talpov really strong today, 81 with a 79 resistance. And then we're looking at uh, Kolda, who's a 77. <coughs> Overall, he's at 84 on that mountain rating today. Kolda could do a really good job, but he's not the guy we're writing for. He's in 12th, and he's a terrible time trialist, so he needs to sacrifice himself as time goes on. If we're lucky, we'll still have... At least these five guys once we hit the top of this one. We're down under 5K now. Uh, we had a pretty hefty breakaway at about five and a half, six minutes, and it was 17 riders, and they've split up, and we just recently sat up, what, 7K to go or something, the last 4K. So we've allowed that break. In fact, it's coming back together. It's now 83 riders, and my entire team is here. So this could actually be huge, huge. If we get a little recovery and get most of them through the next climb <clears throat> and even if we only lose one or two on the climb that follows that'll set us up for the uh for the final if we have all or most of our team when we hit that final that's that's going to be amazing all right, we got water just before that sprint point that was roughly halfway through. Uh, we're going to have time to recover, but I do need to bring these guys back forward as they try to recover a bit. I'm guessing most of them are pretty far back. Not recovering the way I had hoped. In fact, somehow killing still 154 on the heart rate. Some team managers mustn't appreciate Johnson the saying those guys aren't recovering, so never mind. We're at 69, and that's going to shrink. Quite quickly. Kolk, though, did recover a bit. Let's go ahead and protect Kolda. A rider is down, and he's not going to be able to carry on. Just a little harder Let's here. We don't want to push hard. We want to save energy, ultimately, for the final climb. There's an attack in the group okay, the we're going to see a big split here. Yeah. These guys are still set to auto. Yes, they are. And here goes Kolk. The riders are going through a very tough portion with Did I hear an attack by Simon Yates? There's Seb Berwick. Nicola Conti. There's Zeta. Really a punchy attack. He's been spent a lot of time in the breakaway. There's reports of a group of riders taking All right, we're a down to 56 riders. I'm right back down to the again. five that I had. So those three guys really did not recover much at all on that descent, which was surprising. Figured they would get a decent amount of recovery in. That did not happen. We end up with a peloton smaller than what it was at the top of the previous He's peak. Off his race Dunbar for out for Ineos. He had had a crash. And it looks like that was the, top, the type that uh, the broom like wagon eventually finally came along back. and picked him up. Uh, oh shoot, Millar got dropped right at the end of that thing. I was counting on him still being there. We're down to 40. Somebody's taking a tumble in the main Next launch. descent is when we'll get water. We have enough to get through this climb. Already down to just 7k. Which also means that we need to uh, step this up. 
protecting AFP, the weaker climber, Breck, and Kolda should be able to get through this short, steep climb, as it's only five kilometers. Ineos leading the way. And Millar. Millar needs to uh, get back on. That's our project. That's our goal. He's left that group behind. Can he handle this rate for four kilometers, four and a half kilometers? I think he can just about do that. Ravasi, Brion, getting dropped. There's Barrow right at the back of the group. There's Rivera at the back of the group. Malar, oh, this is so steep, 14%. Paulus, Yermakov. Trentadu, is this a move? Looked like one for a moment, but it's not. Just one or two riders going clear, but you can see they're already being chased down. Now we're seeing the, the move. Pace is a bit too docile for some riders who are looking to create a breakaway. Okay, back to auto for you. You didn't make it up here because the pace lifted and you got dropped. AFP follow. Leader. That's going to be Kolda. Spectacular fall. Okay, Breck, the only one gapping AFP so far, is still in a strong position. He's the one we need to have in a strong position. Is that uh, Bernal next to us? It is. Okay, 1K to the top. We're in the group. We're okay. Still another Things push here, though. AFP, you can see his heart rate's higher even though he's at the back of the group. Alright, go ahead and set up. And also we need to recover uh, Breck. You're gonna sit on. Yeah, there you go. And Kolda. Fetch water, 34k to go. And Talapov way back here. Dang, that happened fast. Same with Millar. Millar, not even to the top yet. This downhill, That's well, crazy how big of a gap that is. That was so fast. So fast at that established like that. The pack seems resigned to leaving the victory to the escapees. Okay, back to uh, following Kolda. Or do I? No. You know what? Sit. Sit, boy, sit. We don't need that until we need to respond to save Breck. Protect AFP. Fall for Bardet. Bardet is way off the back. Group A6. Alright. 18 in the peloton the is all. Let's take a look. Vlasov off the back. Barrow, Roglic, Misnata, Conti, Carapaz, all dropped. Carapaz, wow, okay. Uh, Martinez up the road. Hamilton up the road. Let's take a look real quick. Sushan, 40 minutes down. There's Martinez is in 14th at 12 minutes, getting a free ride. There's Hamilton, 13 minutes down in 17th. There is Yates, 26. Dizma. Schrodel, 15 minutes to Garcia, and that's the front of the race. And they're attacking, leaving Schrodel behind. This time it could go all the way. And they're seven minutes up the road. And without a big chase from here, which we're getting a little bit. It's cutting the time back somewhat. Talapov, just a minute 20 behind now. This group... Might have a chance to get back on. Barrow. You've got two movie star riders, Vlasov, working hard to try to bring it back up. Get some support for uh, Bernal. Here's Paulus at the back of the group. Yamaguchi hanging on solo. 
There's Rivera. McNulty's here. Zeta's been picked up by this group. Of course, Yermakov, the leader. Bernal, who sits seventh overall. Lopez in third. We're into the last five kilometers. Limassel, 11th. We've got 12th. We've got 10th. Trent to do is 13th. Sivakov is second for CCC. He's got Mateo working for him. Gegenhardt's working for uh, Bernal. We've caught Sushan Champison, so that's two support riders for uh, McNulty. We've got two support riders. And now it's under a minute to Talapov, who is at full strength. And we're seeing already an acceleration from Any McNulty and Yermakov. That's not the one I need to respond to. Let's see if anybody else is going with them. Yes, they are. Lopez, Rivera, all trying to go. So that is that is our time to uh, respond. And not with follow. We have three riders. So AFP, follow Breck. And follow Kolda and Kolda. 6.4k to go. The climb's only 7.4, but it's 10%, well, so it's front, very steep. So gel for Kolda. There goes Palace trying to attack. Gretzelberger, there's Sivakov, struggling. Champasin's already been dropped. Mateo's doing the chasing now. 15 chasing 5. Now it's 12 chasing 5. Three riders get dropped. They are Champasin, uh, Persia. 4k to go, so we need to start pushing a little harder here. AFP's got to try to hang on, though. Gel up for him. This is a very steep run into the finish. We're at 12% right now. Kolda leading us out well, but AFP struggling with the tempo. So is Breck. Kolda's a little strong today. He's doing all the dirty work for us, keeping us close, but 2K, and I don't think they can. Breck and AFP can keep up very well, so we've got to back off a little bit. 2K. Lopez, Yermakov, McNulty, Rivera, Sivakov. That's the top riders. There's Yates. There's Bernal going for it. And we're about to lose our team. AFP and Breck. Okay, Cold is starting right away. That's not going to work. That's still 1K to go. Uh, how do we do this? I need you to protect... Kolda needs to protect. Okay, AFP is just about keeping on Breck's wheel. Splendid AFP. And a well one. He's going to lose just a hair. The tailenders are still coming in. Garcia wins the stage. He was from the break. Yermakov gets all the way up the order to third. This isn't a major gap to where we're at. Lopez, Bernal. Bernal's going to gain some time. That's going to hurt because he was seventh. Schrodel, Sivakov is seventh. Rivera, Yamaguchi gets ninth. McNulty. And then we are 13th, 14th, 15th on the stage. Definitely ahead of quite a few contenders, but that does hurt a little bit. You've got two breakaway riders at the front. You've got Schrodel. Making it three. And then it's all contenders. So subtract three from where we're at. Meaning we finished only 10th, 11th, and 12th on the stage. So in terms of uh, hoping for a top five, that is going to hurt a little bit. But we should be able to gain some of that time back on the next stage. Of course, we're sitting 5th, 10th, and 12th. Uh, I think we're going to slip down that 5th place. That 10th and 12th should be pretty similar in position at the moment. New standings, we were three minutes behind. Uh, overall, Yermakov was at a minute 14, so we were two minutes down on Yermakov. So Yermakov, three minutes ahead of Sivakov, and then Lopez is at 4.23, Rivera and Bernal on same time in fourth and fifth. Uh, McNulty just ahead of us, we're half a minute down on him in seventh place. A trio of Americans in six, seven, eight. Yamaguchi and I... AFP, still 10th place, still in a good position, but almost 10 minutes down. That hurts. 
Uh, he's more than two minutes behind Breck. The two time trials will certainly help, but it's still too close between those two guys to really say who's going to end up finishing ahead at the end of this thing. <coughs> and Cold is still right in 12th place. So Breck drops two positions, but otherwise we are in the exact same place we were before. We've still got a pretty healthy gap behind Kolda, but AFP to Kolda is close in the standings, and then uh, they're not that far off behind Palace Yamaguchi. And then, of course, the time trials are advantage mostly to us. Sivakov is going to put in a great time there, uh, but otherwise most of those guys are not that good in the time trial. Breck, better than most, still he'll gain time. AFP should gain quite a bit of time. We'll see how the next stage goes. And we're on stage 15. It's the first of two time trials in this Giro. We've only got two climbing stages left, so two and two of each. Let's see what we can do with today. Now, the first five riders, their only objective is to sort out the effort level. The effort level required to be consistent throughout this race. It's not flat all the way through. It's very long. It's 40 kilometers. I don't think we can push a 76 at all, in fact. I think we'll maybe start with a 74 and see where, where that gets us. You can see the first sector is very technical. A lot of lefts, a lot of rights, a lot of short uphill, downhill sections. So it's anything but flat. Second sector is mostly flat until you get to that climb right at the end of the second sector, which is short and steep. And then you have the third sector, which starts with that gradual downhill slope. But then it doesn't finish on the flat. It finishes very much on a gentle uphill slope. Not as much as the downhill uphill of the uh, second sector finish, but uh, enough to very, very well be noteworthy. So you can see a lot of riders probably losing time late in this one by misjudging. And they can lose a lot of time because of the uphill nature of that. Vitor Andrade right now has the top time equal with Ilya Fenn. At 52.17, so we're looking at 52 minutes, and there's going to be sizable gaps. I mean, at the moment, Ekoff in 10th place is 2.14 down, so that's that's a big gap. Now, 74, you can see, at this point, Killen is definitely conserving some energy on a 74. 76 would be that standard on flat terrain, so maybe we'll try a 75 with Kolk, because it does look like... Uh, 74 might be a little too conservative on this one but like I said I think the ending is going to be surprising and it's going to yes there's a downhill section but I think it's going to have a negative impact meaning it's going to cost some extra minus three for Killen minus two for Kolk got to keep that in mind as we go through but uh, Killen's halfway point 20 kilometers to go there's that banner there's a little bit of uphill downhill through here but it's very minor that was one percent there for a little bit one and a half, that is. There's minus 2% for just a moment. Okay, it takes that left-hander. It's winding, but again, there's no wind, so we're not worried about that. And yes, Killen definitely has some energy to spare, but I want to see how the ending goes. He enters it with energy to spare, a good bit of it, probably more than he needs, and we'll try to finish strong with him, but he's in 76th place. He's 55 minutes down. I don't care if he actually does well, I want to properly judge this thing. You can see Kolk, meanwhile, is just barely, barely on the conservative side in terms of energy out of 75. So 75 is probably going to be the way to go. Here we go. Killen on to the climb. Johnson, he'll be starting fairly soon. And you can see we've already gained on Formulo and Bacchioli. Wow. Those two way down here. Killen. Not even at a deficit at this point with a downhill section coming. So yes, I believe 74 is definitely too conservative. In fact, let's just go ahead and push harder for him. We can say without a doubt now that uh, 74 is too conservative. We're going to try a 76 for Johnson, who is going to start here soon. We'll keep Cole Curry's at in the meantime where we still try to uh, sort this out. Johnson, terrible time trialist, so he's not going to do well. But we'll see what a 76 does. Okay, Killen coming up on the finish, and he's got that spare energy. We're going to push pretty hard to this final K, like 99 to the end. You can see how he passes both of those guys. That goes 19th quickest so far, which is not a great time, 219 down. But he had a lot of spare energy, and you see Kolka at this point has a lot of spare energy as well. So a 76 might be the way to go. 
looks like this uphill downhill kind of negates itself and even though you've got an uphill finish it's not so bad and so I think a 76 might actually work out we'll see Kolk nearing the top not even at a deficit yet We can probably push about 77 towards the end as he's going to make up some ground on this descent. Descent is done and he's still got a little bit of spare energy. So 5k to go, we'll push to 79. See what sort of time we can make up. He was 16th at the second time check, minute 52 down. He's a decent time trialist. <laughs> he's a 77. So he's, he's set to have a pretty good time here, 1.5k to go. Pushing 91 now to the end. 99 now to finish it off. Attacking hard. Up to 11th. Minute 38 down. Now it's a 75 most of the way with plenty of spare energy still. So as we get to our better guys, 76 or maybe even harder might be the way to go. But I'm thinking the 76 is kind of the right call. With Talpov and Millar, we'll get two more chances to... Uh, hone that in but it's mostly just going to depend on Johnson here you can see he's got just a little bit of spare energy as we approach the climb he's catching up on Van Mol. Van Mol's a terrible time trialist Johnson's really poor too but he's even better and that 77 mountain is going to be a good rating that's going to scoot him up the order a bit 51st in the overall is all he is in terms of placement that poor stamina resistance uh, really impacting him at this point and he's played the role of domestique mostly. Okay, Talpov, we're going to definitely keep an eye on. Strong Mountain, good resistance, fairly good time trial. Ugh, another minus two. All four guys uh, averaging a minus two. We've had a minus three, minus two, minus one, minus two so far. So terrible draw on the day so far. And in terms of weather and those factors, the expected net for the entire team is a plus three. And that's Breck. Breck has a an expected plus three. I don't know what it is about today. I didn't look at it uh, to figure out what it was, but he was uh, he was looking up for the day big time. So he might actually be in pretty good shape and stay as our main contender. Johnson through the ascent and descent, and he's still right about neutral with that 6K to go coming up on that banner slightly uphill from here. And you figure other better time trialists will will be slightly better off. They all have better resistance, they'll have better time trial ratings. Obviously the timing's a factor too, but if he can make it to the end on the 76, then yes, that's that's our thing. He's gonna fade just before the line. Watch that heart rate. There it goes. It drops 250 meters from the line. Finishes five and a half minutes down, but that's just because he's a poor time trialist. But the effort was Good. Uh, Malar, first one with a positive race day condition. So our minus eight is now minus seven. Uh, let's just hope that balances out with the team because, again, it should end as a plus three. So if we're a minus seven and we finish with a plus three, that means we've got a plus ten with the three riders to come. Let's hope it's we save that for the last two. Kolda, Kolda can be a zero for all I care. And let's get plus five for each of AFP and Breck. Wouldn't that be amazing? I'd love that. That would be fantastic. See, Dalipov with that 74 time trial has actually saved a good bit of energy. He'll be able to push a little bit more at the end. And he's a good climber, so maybe we want to push 77 through the climb. Oh, he's a fantastic descender, too. Unfortunately, a minus two on that one today. Okay, Kolda getting ready to set off, and we are getting into those final 12 riders now. Kolda, not the good time trialist. He'll make up some time on the climb. Talapov hits the top, and he's still neutral. He's not even at a deficit, but he's in 20th at 224 down, so he gains some time with the climb. I think he'll be able to push a 78 because he's going to make up some ground. That means we can go that 77 with Malar too, though he does not have spare energy right now. AFP already started. He's on a minus one. Come on. Come on, game. Plus four for Breck, though. Plus four for Breck. He's in 81 time trial today. I think he can almost get away with pushing 
harder and actually AFP too. Let's be bold. We got to go for something with those guys. Okay, Talapov coming up on the line. Energy perfectly matched. 17th, 246 down. So that's good for him. Got Malar coming up and he's fine. Yeah, he's doing fine. Let's go 76 to the end though. Okay, Kolda. AFP. He's okay on the energy. So is Breck. Okay, first time check. AFP was 18 seconds down in 8th place. Breck, 26 seconds down in 17th. Meanwhile, minute 19 down for Kolda. And for the team right now, Talapov in the top 20. Kolk in the top 25. Delhalt top time at 50.35. And then it's a minute to 3rd place with Patty Bevan. Gagenhart just went at a minute 15. Fenn is still in the top 10 in 7th. Malar, ouch, 5.46 down. That was a terrible time. But, like Johnson, not a good time trialist. Oh, oh gosh, what was the final net? We were in. minus 7, and we gained 3 more. So we're minus 4 on the day. And we should have had a plus 3. So, basically a minus 1 per rider. Poor race day condition draw. Kolda hits the top, still in good shape. And he's at 341. 50th, though. 50th. That, that hurts. AFP goes over the top. He has passed Lemisel. Lemisel, not a good time trialist. 55 seconds, sixth place for AFP at this point. Slow it down. Let's see what's going on. As Breck hits the top, he's also in good shape at this point. He's in seventh, 57 seconds down. There's Paulus, who's two and a half minutes behind. Yamaguchi, first place. Whoa. Whoa. There's Lemisel. There's AFP. There's Kolda. So AFP now chasing down his teammate. Kolda coming up on the line pretty soon here and he's got that 1k to go 77 seems to be about perfect afp also 77 seems to be about perfect as we push in towards the end kolda 53rd 426 afp third place 46 seconds down and breck has energy to spare as we push for the end we're gonna have to go 80 here palace yamaguchi goes to the top of the time charts though that hurts barrow also pretty high up but afp is fourth place right now that's very, very solid. And here comes Breck. One and a half K to go. And he can push pretty hard here. Not too hard, not too hard. He's got to still have a little bit left. Okay, he made it. He made it. Fourth place, 53 seconds. Yes, one second better than his teammate. Look at that. Great condition for Breck. And it pays off, oh, so well. Uh, we're going to make up a ton of time on most of these guys. Yamaguchi, though, what a Freaking amazing time from him. Uh, Barrow as well, but this is going to move us way up the order. 219. Bernal is already three minutes down, but Rivera. Rivera's a 72 time trial. How is he doing this? He's got to be fitness peak objective plus fiving today massively because even with a plus five, he should not be putting in this sort of time. Eighth place? Right. Sivaka. Oh man, Sivakov. Top of the time charts. Top of the time charts. Oh, we're probably going to slip down to fifth and sixth here. Yes, he's and we do. He goes top by 10 seconds. Time. Lopez, two and a half minutes down. Yermakov, gaining a lot of time on a lot of these guys. But remember, the gaps are fairly big. Sivkov, Yamaguchi, too tough. But we are doing fantastic compared to everybody else. Here's Yermakov. He's in a good shape. Minute 13, he comes in just behind us. So we're not really gaining any time on him. So he'll still be sitting, well, he'll be sitting second probably. I think Sivakov's going to take over the lead of this race. But otherwise, that's a really good result for uh, both Breck and AFP. And that's going to that's gonna see their timing improve by quite a bit. Here we have Sivakov, Lopez, Rivera, Breck back into fifth place. AFP, ninth. That's all he gained. Wow. Only moved up one spot. But that's because time gaps were fairly large. Fairly large. And he's three minutes behind his teammate. Three minutes behind his teammate. So I think at this point, we have to assume, uh, 
We'll have to take a look at what that final time trial is. How long is it? I think it's totally flat, the final one. So that's going to favor your time trialists the most. Uh, unless it's an insane length, I, I think we're going to probably see Breck in a higher placing at the end of this one than AFP. He had a good race day condition at the right time. Kolda drops one spot to 13th, but definitely isn't in a bad place. Lemisel still 11th. Paulus drops to 10th. AFP moves up, but uh, he's a minute behind Bernal. Two minutes behind McNulty. Yamaguchi flies up the order is now just nine seconds behind Breck. Uh, I believe he was ninth or tenth. Well, would have been tenth because AFP was, uh, I mean, AFP was tenth. So he would have been ninth. I think Bernal was eighth. Paulus, the one dropping down. I, I cannot believe that uh, Rivera put in that sort of time. 72 time trialist. How that? How the heck did he do that? I mean, guaranteed he was plus five. No other option. No way he gets a top 10 on the day with a 72 time trial. I mean, Breck, 76 time trial, and he had a plus four. And he was seconds ahead of Rivera, was all. Uh, we have a tendency to, if I'm a 76, we have a tendency to finish a good half minute ahead of other 76s to a minute because we manage things perfect down to the wire. And the opponents do not do that very often, even on the hardest difficulty level. Five and a half minute gap to Lopez. We've got a one-two breakaway at this point. Sivakov tries to close that gap on Yermakov and really doesn't. Yermakov put in a pretty dang solid time as well. He's got to be riding plus five, which means he's sitting 85 Mountain every day. He's sitting on 78, 79 resistance every day. Uh, no wonder he is just crushing it. Same with Sivakov. Uh, we have a chance at third. But honestly, I think we're still just going to be trying to hang on for a top five. Time trial at the end, it's going to require a good race day condition again. There's no guarantee we're going to get that. We have two more climbing stages and one more time trial left in this one. That is going to do it for this one, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.